One morning, during mid-April 1944, a colored tech sergeant, Vernon C. Waters, assigned to the 221st Chemical Smoke Generating Company, stationed here before transfer to Europe, was brutally shot to death by a person or persons unknown. Welcome to Inside New York, and we're back with the best in film and theater in New York with our guest co-host, Richard Wesley. Hello, everybody. All right. <laughs> we're going to mm -hmm. start with a play that both of us saw. Yes. Which is a soldier's play. The only thing that will move the race is power. That's all the white respects. People like you. Well, you just make us seem like fools. Yes. And the reason why we wanted to make sure that this was at the top of the show is because we saw both the original in 1981 yes. as well as this Current, current production, production on Broadway. On Broadway. Right. Which uh, Charles Fuller said he didn't ever think his play would go to Broadway. Well, yeah, I mean, but, back, in, in, back in 1981, um, you know, there was a sense, uh, it, it, in fact, uh, 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 Charles was told, as, as well as Doug and, and, uh, and everyone else at the Negro Ensemble Company, that um, the subject matter was too, was perhaps a little too radical for uh, Broadway audiences, contemporary broad Broadway audiences of that era. And that was 1981, and, you know, uh, that, was, that was 10 years after Melvin Van Peebles had put Ain't Supposed to Die a Natural Death on stage on Broadway. And it was in spite of the fact that uh, Soldier's Play had already won the Pulitzer Prize. It, you know, and, I mean, that's, yeah. that is a recognition that soldiers play not only will go into the American canon, canon. Of, uh, of plays, but also it was the best play on stage in America that year. That's what the Pulitzer Prize represents on so many levels. And, and so the idea that it was not, you know, that it was considered too radical in terms of its subject matter for Broadway audiences, even in 1981, was a, was a, a bit much to swallow. But, surprising. Um, yeah, yeah, I thought it was surprising, and I, it wasn't clear to me when it was mentioned in, in the symposium uh, with Kenny Leon mm -hmm. and, and David Allen Greer and Blair also and Blair Underwood. Yes, yes. Right. yes. Uh, it was mentioned then that Charles did not ever think it would go to Broadway. Well, yeah. You know, here we are. Uh, this is 2020. Um, uh, and, and so we're, we're a good 31 years after he first uh, 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 wrote the play, I, you know, um, uh, and uh, so or nearly 40 years, actually, I'm sorry, 40 yes. years uh, after he first wrote the play. And so by this time, I'm sure, yes, Charles probably thought, well, if it isn't on Broadway by now, it never will be. And then suddenly, as he mentioned, um, he gets a phone call. He got a phone call while he was in Toronto. Um, from the producers saying we want to uh, uh, we want to produce the play in New York. Yeah, that's cool, you know. But we want to put it on Broadway. Yes. <laughs> so, so he was he very was like, shocked. Yeah, he was surprised. Uh, you know, this is just a year after you know the NEC. Well, I mean, less than a year. I, it, it, I'm sorry, right. I got that wrong. Less than a year, well, only within months, relatively speaking, of when the NEC did a. Uh, a, a revival, revival. Yes. Uh, a, a revival production of it. Stellar. Um, yes, it was a wonderful production. Everyone was talking about it. Exactly. And and and, the, and, and, and I must say, in Charles' absence, because you know he did mm -hmm. pass on, that right after that show was. You're talking revived, about Charles Weldon. Charles Weldon. That's right. Because we Weldon, got two yes. Charles here. Yes, Charles, Charles Weldon. Charles Weldon, he, yes. who was the artistic director who assumed yes. that position from Douglas Turner Ward, right. um, it was he that decided to put on the revival of a soldier's play in the theater, I believe it was 80 um, St. Mark's Place. Yes, which yes. Which is, is exactly where I think the NEC originally had located yes. it. Itself. That was the uh, that was the yes. uh, address of the uh, NEC uh, when when it was when it was originally opened uh, back in 
wow, 1967, 1968, something like that. And, and that's <laughs> you know? where I first went to work mm. for them. So it was really, you know, a, a marvelous moment to behold, to be there, and to see this stellar presentation, yes. far none of a soldier's play. It really brought tears to my eyes. And that night, Charles Weldon said that he wanted to take it to Broadway, and he had someone who had expressed interest. So yes. I have the feeling, given that it got such critical acclaim, and they did bring it back because, you know, they sold out and uh, they couldn't continue the engagement, mm -hmm. and so they brought it back again. I think with all those critical reviews, it might have shaken uh, up uh, some of the producers yeah, on Broadway yeah. to beat him to it. <laughs> no problem at all thinking and imagining that uh, Charles Weldon's production at the uh, at, at, at 80 St. Mark's Place inspired whomever mm -hmm. to uh, get themselves together and bring that production to Broadway. Um, here's what's so great about 80 St. Mark's Place. Um, okay. The performance space is, I think, maybe one-fourth the size of the performance space that exists in the Broadway production. That's the first thing. It also is smaller than the performance space uh, at the old West Side Playhouse, where uh, uh, Soldier's Play originally um, was performed by the NEC when they moved further uptown, up there to, what was that, 55th Street. Yes. And um, so— also, the, the size of the audience, it's something like 150 seats. So everyone is on top of the play. And the power of what Charles Fuller had written is palpable. There's no escape from it. Right. There's, no, there's no way to be um, object, uh, to objectify yourself or objectify the play because you're seated way, way, way back away from yes. it. The furthest seat in 80 St. Mark's Place has you, literally has you on top of the stage. Right, right. And, uh, and, and I have, yeah, I did not get to see that production. Oh. Uh, yeah, I know. Oh, I, I know. tried I to know. tell him everybody, I all know. of my and, oh, I, Believe me, I heard Facebook I heard, and I heard, Twitter followers I knew heard from everyone because about I went it. opening night and yeah. I said you got to run I and know, see I can't, this I cannot show. tell you how many <gasps> fingers got wagged at me for missing that for missing that production, but um, and Gil, you know, uh, oh, well, just everyone in that cast was, mm, uh, you but know, particularly yeah. he really um, channeled. Adolf Caesar. Yeah, Gil. It was a, a major uh, a major production, um, and uh, it was a reminder once again of the significance of what Charles Fuller had done and the magnificence of what Charles Weldon had done, and the one and the, the you know just the wonderful nature of his vision to bring that particular play back at this point in history, and he mounted it. And, um, well, here we are now. We're still talking right. about it. Yes. Um, and uh, uh, anyone who has been exposed to this play, um, they, you know, it, it gets them talking, it gets them thinking, um, and it reminds us, you know, it reminds us of, 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 of the struggles and the um, indomitable spirit that uh, has sustained us across— um, you know, so many years across uh, 400 years of experience uh, uh, in what uh, Elijah Muhammad once referred to as uh, the wilderness of North America. Um, and, and for those, and, yeah, right. oh, I'm sorry, go um, ahead. Yeah, uh, I'm yeah. sorry, because we, you know, we could talk <laughs> yeah. about this forever. But uh, for those who haven't seen yeah. a soldier's play, um, I just wanted to say, I think when I first saw it, and all I can remember, and I couldn't remember whether it was the play or the film, was Adolf Caesar's performance. It just, that's all yes. I can remember. So, and, and, you know, he's and, indelible right. as, as Sergeant Vernon Walters. Yes. Uh, Waters, rather. And um, uh, uh, almost so, every actor who's, who has to come behind right. him and play that part 
Um, there's a Adolf Seeley. Order, it's a tall as I order, said you know. To you know, David, you know, considering <laughs> yeah, yes, when you consider really. Adolf is only, was only about this tall. But <laughs> he, he was, was only, yeah. powerful. But it, it's a very powerful um, yes. production, uh, a performance, um, and it's and, a brutal you know, role, you know. And, and, and from what I've heard, um, Adolf was. Nothing like him, you know. He's I just nothing, and nothing I, I, like I actually Vernon did. Wa I, I, I met him um, at his home, and, and and there was some event that was given, and I I, I don't even remember having a conversation because I guess he was probably shy, or you know, he was so, or maybe I was just so much in awe. But he, mm. he it, but from people who knew him, they said. He was the nicest, but he was he totally was. the opposite yeah. of that Incredible role. sense of humor. Yes. Um, very, very erudite um, um, and, and, you know, really vocal. Um, he, uh, um, he was a, 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 a bound of energy. He had a tendency to play characters older than he actually was. Um, uh, uh, and... Um, you know, so people tended to think of him as this much older man when, in fact, uh, 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 he was he was middle aged, but he was he was a, he was on the younger side of middle age, and uh, you know, just just um, uh, a, a a wonderfully, you know, funny and um, uh, uh, um, uh, embracing uh, uh, personality. Um, if, if you were his friend, you were his friend, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he was inviting mm -hmm. um, in that way. So he had to go to places to play the different characters that he mm -hmm. played. Um, he played a multi a, a multiplicity of characters um, uh, because he was a founding member of the NEC, and he played all different kinds of roles. Um, and uh, uh, Vernon Walt Waters just happened to be, um, you know, the last really great role that he played at the NEC. Uh, but um, uh, it was just the latest of a string of roles mm. that, that, that uh, you know, Adolf was known for. And, of course, you know, Adolf w did voiceovers for commercials. Mm. And um, uh, I, he was like the, the voice of KLM Airlines, uh, for instance. Mm -hmm. And I remember one time at his home, um, in fact, Charles Weldon was, was there, because uh, uh, Charles and Adolf were really good friends mm -hmm. um, among so many other people in Adolf's life. And this particular day, Charles and I were, were with Adolf, and somehow or other, we got around to this whole question of commercials and things. Um, I think he was up for another one. And Adolf proceeded to do for us all the different voices. He had these different tones, these different intonations, um, uh -huh. these different accents that he would use. <laughs> you know, That's and and um, he could take his voice up several mm -hmm. octaves. He could bring it down. He had a natural uh, kind of baritone voice. And uh, Adolf was just—he he was just an, uh, an incredible. Uh, a, a fantastic individual, and um, uh, America lost a major, major uh, talent uh, when he passed. His death was was premature, and in that prematurity, it was tragic to to have lost him at that point because he was about to explode um, um, in, in, into into American consciousness sure. in a way that uh, ah, yeah. Well, we can't not also share, of course, opening night. Unfortunately, Richard couldn't be present. Right, yeah. But Bummer. in looking back <laughs> at, but he did see it, and um, looking back at that night, and mm -hmm. for those who haven't seen uh, our show devoted to the opening night, uh, Charles Fuller and Douglas Turner Ward, we obviously have to give uh, major acknowledgments to Douglas Turner Ward, who, of course, directed uh, A Soldier's Play in he the, did, yes. the original production. Produced and directed. Produced and directed, yes. <laughs> um, and uh, he was fortunate to be present, along with Charles Fuller, 
who came in um, from Canada. Yeah. And we also had uh, opportunity to interview um, Kenny Leon, yes. who I thought did a great job as director, directing yes. it and, you know, putting a little uh, spin, you know, updating it a little bit mm -hmm. with, uh, I don't want to give it away, so I won't say. Um, and Blair Underwood, I have to say, I don't remember uh, that role so prominently. I, I just thought he did a great job, mm -hmm. really fantastic job. And there's a point where he does something, and I just wish we had a clip of it, because it really, he reaches <laughs> down, hello, reaches down in the deeps of his, I think, soul mm -hmm. to bring that out. Um, so, um, well, I remember, you know, you know how, in watching it was, Howard in, Rollins, yeah, I believe it Howard was. Rollins played right. the role on film. That's what and, it was. Um, a wonderful, wonderful uh, character actor uh, named uh, Charles uh, Charles Brown played oh, the part. Oh, you know Charles. Uh, uh, played the part um, uh, on uh, at the NEC off Broadway. Yes. And uh, you know, sadly, we lost Charles as well. Um, in the in the early 1980s, in fact, uh, um, uh, uh, but yes, you know, but, but Charles but, played the role initially. Um, mm -hmm. Each yeah. each of the actors, all three of them, have played Lieutenant Davenport differently, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and it's because of something that Blair said in um, uh, his interview with you. You know, which was a great interview, by the way. You did a wonderful job with it. I got to, you know, I got to give you, I got to give you kudos on that. I got to tip, well, I don't have a hat, so I can't <laughs> tip it. But you did a good job on that. Thank um, you, thank you. But you know, remember when Blair was talking about building, building character from the inside yes. out? Where did you go to be able to, to take on such a really iconic role? Where you start is the humanity. You start from the feelings, the emotions, the thoughts the lived experiences, um, hopes, dreams, passions, loves, all, all those things. You know, he gave so much yeah. in that interview. Okay. And you know, this the was three actors, opening night. Yeah. They got an after party and <laughs> David was saying, hey, look, I want to get to the after party. And I, I told the publicist, I work very hard because I'm documenting <laughs> all this and you will find I'm the last person there I'm not running to the parties because <laughs> yeah. I'm, what well, we're wanted, doing here get, is very yeah, you important. You wanted to get that uh, inside. Exactly. So, so, but he, yeah, he, so, and yeah. he talked about also, I think his dad was in the military. Right, okay, so, of the three know, actors, right. of the three actors who, who, have, who I have seen essay that role, mm -hmm. uh, Charles, um, uh, uh, Howard, Howard, and uh, Blair, okay, um, each of them have played the role differently. Blair is the only one of the three who is actually a child of, of a military officer. He was the one of the three who had this very strong military background. And he was talking about building the character from the inside out. That's what all three of them did, and that's why their performances are so different. You can't look at Blair and say, oh, he's channeling uh, Howard Rollins from the movie. Mm -hmm. And you can't look at Howard Rollins in the movie and say, oh, he was doing the same kind of things that, um, that Charles was doing on stage in the original production, because each of them was concentrating first on finding out for themselves who Lieutenant Davenport was. Captain, like it or not, I'm all you've got. I've been ordered to look into Sergeant Waters' death, and I intend to do exactly that. Mm -hmm. The interesting thing is, it's a small world. Okay, there's a line of, of dialogue in the play where Lieutenant Davenport um, is identified as having graduated from Howard University's law school. Mm -hmm. Charles Brown, who played the role, graduated from Howard University. And at the time that he did the play, he was roughly the same age as Lieutenant Davenport is in the play. So mm -hmm. Charles is using his experience as a, as a Howard University student, his knowledge about what, it, what that meant and what it uh, meant to be um, at the Howard University Law School, because all of us get inundated with that history once we arrive on campus and everything. Um, and then he starts putting himself into Lieutenant Davenport's shoes. And as an actor, he begins creating the role 
as a combination of his own personal experiences mm -hmm. and his own understanding of who the character is, and then layering over those other experiences, what, what, what it means to be a military officer, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sure Howard Rollins uh, did much of the same thing, because I worked with Howard, and, uh, and I was fortunate to have him perform in a play of mine, and I saw his process as he was developing the character that he, that, uh, he portrayed in my play. And Blair is there in the lobby of the theater talking to you about the same kind of thing, building the character from the inside out. And so that that performance that Blair is doing, I mean, he's creating. And it was interesting. <laughs> it was fascinating because also, you know, and I asked this question to all three of them: David mm -hmm. Alan Greer, uh, um, uh, and Blair, and, and, and Namdi Namdi, Ram Namdi Namdi, and even Kenny Leon. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, did you see the original production? Mm -hmm. I was surprised Kenny Leon had not. Um, well, he was in Atlanta then, I think. Right. He might not have seen yeah, it. Right. Because um, uh, I don't but, think it toured. Right, um, so, right. so he, uh, but, you know. But yeah. similarly, you know, when you have somebody who's in a production that's been revived um, and it's iconic, you have to assume that iconic role. You know, you always wonder did you take a peek to see if they haven't seen it already? You mm -hmm. know, and how do you confront? that challenge of being able to put your own, you know, take on it, uh, <laughs> it, 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 you know, so that people remember you maybe more prominently well, than the other individual. Well, and, and a lot of people say that they don't want to see. Absolutely. Because that, they, yes, they, the they, smart they, ones, right. the smart ones absolutely but refuse to see, see how the role was portrayed originally. Listen to what Blair says, okay. and I won't give it away. You'll have to check it out. Uh -huh. We do have it up for our lucky <laughs> YouTube subscribers. They have probably seen it already, because if you don't catch the show, you can view it on YouTube. Subscribe. Yes, <laughs> you know, and you get an alert as a subscriber. And all of the shows are not on public. Mm -hmm. So um, this one I did for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. So all of that is to say that you need to subscribe. Okay. And there's a lot of material that... that, that Plus, we'll be announcing, <laughs> yeah. because we still don't have the firm date, mm -hmm. we'll be announcing uh, Richard... Wesley's book signing that we're putting together. Uh, that it, anything with Richard is going to be, you know, special. We're going to try to make it right. special, that's exactly. for sure. It will be an enriching experience. That I can guarantee you, and a very special one. I do think we should close with the significance of the play, uh, <sighs> because, as I start to say, when I first saw it, and even coming back to see it, I was kind of on the fence. I really had mixed emotions about the subject matter. Mm -hmm. um, and, and speaking with someone else who saw it, you know, with me, they conveyed the same thing. Um, I think there was a concern, to be, to in a nutshell, mm -hmm. that a soldier's play kind of gave white people, let them off the hook, you know. As you will hear, especially these days, when Black Lives Matter mm -hmm. and, you know, or we're talking about uh, getting, um, you know, police brutality, et cetera, yeah. mm -hmm. that a lot, there's a lot of people that will push back and say, look, they're killing themselves, you know. That's, oh, that's yes. not the problem. That's not yeah. the problem. Now, seeing it again, I kind of un saw the subtleties of the, that, which I'm sure you're going mm -hmm. to convey, mm -hmm. that th I think that what I I Charles Fuller was expressing was the, the amount of self-hate that he is part of that, that process. Yes. It's deeper than what you might see and think on the surface, that, you know, that this sergeant got to that point because of the, the tolls of slavery and uh, abuse that blacks have suffered um, from the time they came to America's mm -hmm. shores, and that it's more of a examination of the effects 
of racism. Yes. And 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 uh, discrimination. No, I agree with I agree. You know? I, I agree with that assessment. So, but uh, um, I can, you know, I, I, and, and I don't remember if at the time there was any pushback. Um, in, in, in 1981, in 1980, so 1981, back. there was no pushback uh, uh, oh, no. Um, okay. uh, that I can recall against the uh, soldier story, because play. soldiers, I, so, right. I'm, yeah, soldiers play. Soldiers play was at um, the NEC. It was playing before a predominantly black audience. Yes. Okay. Uh, it was a play. Uh, written by a black playwright who was speaking to black people, you know, the black play for black people um, uh, uh, idea. And so this was a conversation that was going on inside the family. Mm. And uh, we were talking about things that, um, uh, uh, you know, was, were very close to us. Mm -hmm. um, and you said that this was based on Charles Fuller's experience he had experience he was in the army he yeah. so he had some experiences and he brought some of that uh, uh, military experience to bear there was actually however a real life story that this play is based on that occurred uh, 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 during the 1940s well, not while he was there. Not while he was in the army. Okay, no, okay. No, not while Charles was in the I army. Wanted no, no, you to that wasn't. Yeah, that, yeah. No, I was no, like, no, oh no, my no. goodness. <laughs> no, no, like, Charles, Charles oh, wasn't involved okay. in a, in a in, you well, know. Well, I mean, it, he could have been one of the, you know, the people he, no, that were just in the, you know, the group. It wasn't. He was in the military. He was in the military, but he wasn't a white eyewitness to a murder or anything like that. But but something like that actually happened. Yeah, something like this actually happened, and. I have always, um, I mean, in terms of the the, the, the the reason that the play resonates mm -hmm. coming all the way down into uh, this year, 2020, a play that is set in 1944, is because at the core of that play are, are discussions about um, justice in America and how it is often misapplied to us, 